Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to bind off loosely. So many pattern instructions will tell you to bind off loosely, and the reason that that is necessary is because that the typical bind off that is normally used to finish off a project kind of gets tight for a lot of people. And when it is tight, it's very hard for that edge to stretch very much. And of course, this is a very common problem with beginners, but it can happen to anybody. So what I have here is two swatches that up till this point are exactly the same. And they're done on the same size needles, same stitches, everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the regular bind off method with the suspended bind off, which is very similar to the regular bind off, but it just adds a little bit of an extra step in there to make sure that all the stitches are bound off loosely. So first let's look at what happens when you bind off and why it becomes tight when you are working the typical bind off technique. So let's start with this swatch right here. And I am just going to do a knitted bind off, meaning I'm going to knit the stitches. Of course, there is an actual knitted bind off, which is a totally different thing. And it is stretchier. But if the only bind off that you are currently comfortable with is the regular one, this is a lot of times what it will look like. Now, I should mention here that I am knitting continental style. And in fact, as much as possible, I am using my ergonomic speed knitting method. But if you are an English style knitter or if you use some other type of technique to make your stitches, then it will look a little different for you. But the actual um, step of passing the stitches over each other is going to be the same. So I'm going to knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one. Then I'm going to knit another stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one knit another stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one. And particularly if you are a beginner, mine don't usually get super tight, but they're still not as loose and stretchy as the method I'm going to show you in a minute. But when we bind off in this manner, a lot of times there isn't really enough slack in the yarn to allow very much give in those bound off stitches. So if you can see at this point, this is how much stretch my bind off has thus far. So I'm just going to do the last few stitches to demonstrate. And what can happen is that if you knit your stitches tightly and your stitches are already tight, then when you go to pull this over, let me get to the next one because two tight stitches in a row makes it worse. When you go to pull this over, not only is it harder to pull it over, but when you tug on that stitch, it makes the one before it even tighter. You can see how small that stitch before the one that I just did is getting in that edge. So one thing that can help with a loose bind off or meaning a bind off that's too tight and needs to be looser is obviously to take care of your tension if you have any tension issues as far as your knitting being too tight. Just for the last few stitches, I'm going to demonstrate this English style. I'm not very good at knitting English style, but I will try to show you anyway. So normally what would happen is we would either go like this, and then pass the stitch over, or else we would go like this, and then pass the stitch over. So either way, when you're knitting... English style, and I, I say again I'm terrible at this because this is not my method. I've since switched. I haven't done this, this method in many years in an actual project. But when you do this, you know, it's not really any worse or better than um, Continental as far as it being tight in the bind off. But regardless, it's going to depend partly on your tension. And even if you do have decent tension, for your knitting and your stitches are not overly tight, you're still going to have a hard time with that bind off being loose enough in many cases. So there is our first swatch and I'm just going to stretch the loop on that last stitch so that it will not come unraveled while we are talking about the next technique. 
So let's just look at the stretch in this for a second. Here's the cast on edge, which I use a knitted on cast on. And here's the bind off edge. Do you see how there's a limit to how much that will stretch? And if I like yank on it, there's, there's a, a very um, distinct limit on how far you can pull that. And while that might not seem like a big deal because it lays flat, if this was like the top of a toe up sock or, you know, even something, you know, just a, a general project that needs to have some stretch in it, this will not cut it. It needs to either be much looser or use a stretchy bind off, which there are many types of stretchy bind offs, but unless you're specifically instructed to use one, Binding off loosely will often give you enough give in that edge to make it work well. So let's look at the suspended method of binding off. And this technique is only slightly different than a regular bind off. It produces the same results, the same edge. It's just that it adds an extra step to make sure that your stitches do not get too tight. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and knit that first stitch knit the second stitch and then what we're going to do is of course take the first stitch and pass it over the second one the only thing we're not going to do is let that stitch fall off the tip of my left needle so i just lifted it up and passed it over the second one but it's still sitting on my left needle so i'm going to come over here and knit the next stitch while it is also on my left needle and now that i've got the stitch i passed over and the stitch i just knit i'm going to lift both of them off then I'm going to take that first stitch, pass it over the second one, and again leave it on the tip of the left needle while I knit the next stitch. Then I can lift both of those off, pass the first stitch over the second one, and then leave it on my left needle tip while I knit the next stitch. And then pass the first stitch over the second one, again leave it on the left needle tip, while I knit the next stitch. Now, if you are familiar with my ergonomic speed knitting method, you will notice that I am using the um, little helper finger for difficult stitches, which just lifts the yarn around the needle tip because there's no um, ability to slide or move the needles here because they are um, held together in too many places right now. But with the bind off, you're not going to be you know, binding off through your entire project. That's not the whole project. So you can still use the regular motions for the ergonomic speed knitting method the rest of the time. Now if you are knitting with a different method, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference because either way, I'm going to try this English style thing again, either way I'm still going to leave that stitch that I passed over on the left needle tip, insert my needle into the next stitch, knit that stitch, and then lift both the stitch that I passed over and the stitch that I just knit off of my needles. So if we want to do this in a purl method, we can do that. So let's go ahead and pass that next stitch over. And if you notice that since I've passed the stitch over and left it on my left needle tip, I cannot bring the yarn to the front to do a purl stitch. So this is why when we do a suspended bind off where we're using both knits and purls in the same row, we need to keep in mind when we need to bring the yarn to the front or to the back. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the yarn to the front after I lift that stitch off, purl that next stitch, and then if I'm going to knit the next one, then I can pass it over with the yarn at the back. But if I'm going to purl the next one, then I need to pass it over with the yarn at the front. And then I can come across here, knit the next stitch, and lift them both off. And then again, if I'm going to switch back to knitting, I can keep the yarn in the back before I pass the stitch over. Or if I'm going to purl again, I can keep it in the front. Now I want to go ahead and match the um, bind off edge to my first swatch just so that you can compare the two. So once we've finished up both of our swatches, we can compare how much stretch and how much give is in the bind off edge because I'm not going to be adjusting my tension as I do this. I'm just knitting with you know normal tension in my stitches the same as I would for the regular bind off method 
but I'm just holding the past over stitch on the left needle tip before I work the next stitch. And that actually, that little change actually does make a big difference in how stretchy your bind off is. Now, if you are working a pattern that says use such and such a stretchy bind off, this will not substitute for an officially stretchy bind off because this does not have quite as much stretch as your typical stretchy bind off would because there are many bind offs that are designed to make the edge very, very elastic. And although this edge will not be very elastic, it will be much easier to stretch and therefore it will not um, limit the stretch of the edge near as much as the previous method that I showed you a minute ago. So we're almost to the end here. And I'm going to pass that one over, leave it on the needle tip again, knit my last stitch, lift them both off, and then pass the final stitch over. So let's stretch the loop on this needle and we'll drop it and we can look at these two swatches side by side now. So if we compare on this swatch, you can see how that the cast on edge here is wider than the bind off edge. And part of that is because it does not have as much give in it. And of course it also has some effect from the um, curve in. It does curve in a bit here just because of the stockinette stitch pulling a little narrower than the garter stitch below it. But either way, even if this were blocked and this was square and laying perfectly square, this edge at the cast on still has a lot more stretch in it than this one does. So let's look at our piece over here with the suspended bind off, which is like I said, just like a regular bind off, it's just adds that little step to make it a lot looser. So here's our cast on edge. And again, this is the same number of stitches as the other swatch. Cast on edge, bind off edge. Look how much more give this has in it than the regular bind off. Here are the two edges here. I'm trying to pull both of them at the same time, but let's just kind of pull on the uh, loops that are here. I've got these two edges even. This pink swatch with the suspended bind off has about an inch of extra stretch in it, more than the regular bind off method shown on the other swatch. And that can really make a big difference in the feel of your finished items, especially if that edge is to be worn around a person's body somewhere, or whether it be around their head, like a hat, or if it is around the wrist, as if it were a cuff, or whatever type of edge that you're working with, this typical bind off will not have anywhere near as much give in it as the suspended bind off, even though it's the same technique, just with one extra step. So if you have a hard time binding off loosely, and if your bind off edge kind of goes like this and doesn't have very much give in it, then next time a pattern tells you to bind off loosely, use the suspended bind off technique to help you with that and make your bind off edge a lot looser and stretchier. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have a favorite bind off technique in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.